The stock market just won't stop falling. We're in the bit of a pickle. What do we do? Welcome to the channel. So today's theme is obviously in pickle because we're all in a pickle for those that are holding bags or in a pickle for those that are losing money, don't know what to do, why the market's crashing. Everyone's in a pickle except for those that may be sitting on the sidelines just getting in there like, oh, look at all these discounts, but maybe they're buying now while the markets are falling. You never heard the saying trying to catch a fallen knife? No, let the knife hit the floor. Then you pick it up and then you use it. So we're gonna take a look at the markets. Why are the markets falling down? When will the red end? So I'm gonna go over all of that. Also, what am I doing? What am I doing to protect my positions and how am I making money in a red market? We're gonna go over all that. Also, we're gonna go over, is this normal? What is happening? So I'm gonna clear all the problems, everyone's questions, we're gonna go over all of it. Before we get into that, if you wanna know when the market's gonna bottom exactly, Click the link in the description. I do stock alerts. You'll get a bing right to your phone when I buy, sell, reduce, add, or go all in on any of these stocks. And I'm going to do that very aggressively when the market sell off ends, which I know, I think I have a good idea as to when that's going to happen because I've seen this happen a million times. I'm not even flinching from this little, small, little dust of a fall. It's nothing. So let's dig right in to find out what's going on. So looking at SPY right now, if you are watching this, you should always watch the markets rather than just your stocks. So always take a peek at them. And I like to look at SPY because that's the one I just like to gauge the markets based out of. So in here, we had an aggressive run. People are just buying, 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 buying because the markets were only going up. So when there's too much buying going on and not enough selling, the market's gonna flush you. And now, because over the past 12 months, so many new traders have jumped into trading, they got weak hands. Okay, diamond hands didn't really spread to everyone. They got weak hands, which is okay because it's called profit taking, which is what you're supposed to do. So when the weak hands start to sell, other weak hands start to sell them more and more and more and more and more, and it causes a fall in the markets. So that's what happened right here. But the, the cool thing that counteracts that is we know that the markets are just gonna keep going higher. So everyone is trying to buy stocks on discount because we know they're just gonna go up and up and up, right? And you wanna get the best price. So when you see stock market come down 5%, 10%, whatever it is, or stocks in general coming down 25%, you're like, it can't go much cheaper, I gotta buy it. They all buy it here and it juices it up. They, everyone's buying, 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 buying. We want the best price then, uh-oh, uh-oh. The roller coaster's starting to turn. It's starting to turn head down. So. This is why I'm saying you need to be watching the stock market as well as your stocks because you would have seen this curling action. Okay, when there's curling action going on, it doesn't typically then shoot up. That doesn't make sense because this indicates that, okay, people are buying, but now we have uncertainty here. We're at a top and then we have selling going on and people are kind of like, oh, are we going to fall? Is the coaster at that peak? And then more selling, more selling, more selling. And then now we got this. Now we have a potential waterfall effect that might happen. So I'm gonna go over where the market's gonna end. The There's a few support areas, but the main support boop, is right there. 358 is the main support. This is where the markets should end their fall, should end the bloodbath, right? The market should stop there around 358. Now, if we look at last year, because last year the same thing happened over here, everyone's buying, and then eventually it's gonna flush you out. Because if everyone's buying and they think, oh, we just make money, just throw it in, throw it in, throw it in. No, that's not how it works, okay? It's supposed to be hard to make money. So the market's gonna flush you out. And that's what happens here. Everyone's sold, oh my God, the markets are over, the economy's crashing, it's the end of the world. Nope, tricked you, we're going back up. Same thing, rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Then we had this long bullish run, and now we're rinsing and repeating again. And it might happen a few times, but eventually we're gonna hit 400. We're gonna hit 500. And 420, we're gonna celebrate. So over here, we had a red month from September 2nd all the way to the end of the month till October 1st. Same thing here, October 12th all the way to November 2nd. These are one month sell-offs. And in here, the sell-off really began in February 19th and we're only in early March. So we could go to March 19th, right there, around 358. So we could have this slow, sell off with little pops in between little pop 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 little popcorn pops you know little greens oh he was wrong oh no he was right oh no he was wrong oh no he's right 
all the way down to 360, 358, somewhere around there. And then we're going to slowly head back up. But then it's going to be an aggressive head up, just like over here, because people like realizing, okay, we're finally bouncing back. And as that gets confirmed, and it's not confirmed when it does this. No, it has to bounce around for a few days. And once people see green for many days in a row, 10% days, 20% days in certain stocks, then we're going to get this aggressive move up. These aggressive rallies, these aggressive rallies, okay? We're going to get all these aggressive rallies because everyone is buying stocks now. Everyone wants to make money. Not many people know how to make money in bearish markets. There is one other small area, which is where it could fall to, which is right here. 370 would be a nice bottom, maybe even a little higher, maybe right there. 371, 370 would be a small area, which it has touched. The markets could bounce around here and consolidate and then head back up. So I'll be watching. Like I said, I'm gonna send that alert out on my stock alerts. I'm always in contact because it does come with my Discord group where I'm always in there chatting, sending charts all day long, keeping everyone in the loop with what's exactly going on. Now, moving on to how can you protect yourself and how can you make money in a bearish market? There's two ETFs that I like, two bearish ETFs. So let me explain it to you. If you're new, I'll break it down, SPXS. So SPXS is the inverse for SPY. So when SPY, the regular S&P 500 goes up, SPXS goes down, it does the inverse. So if you think the market, the S&P 500 is going down, SPXS will go up. And that's why right here it bottomed and it started heading up because the markets are going down. But this doesn't last long because we know the markets bounce right back. So look at this, the markets crashed, came right back, down, came right back, the markets, this is overall going down, but look how it's slowly curling. This is another indicator. So you could not only look at SPY, also look at the inverse, look at SPXS, because you're gonna kinda get a good gauge as to what's happening. You're gonna see, wait, SPXS is curling. Why is it curling? Is that an indication that we're getting a crash? That the market's gonna correct? The market's gonna pull down and go red? Also, another one that you could do is short the tech sector. TECS is another good one. Same thing, because we know that most tech stocks are the reason that the markets are pulling down. Everything's overinflated. Everything ran up so much that it's all coming down now, right? Makes sense. TECS is following the bearish of the tech sector. So the tech sector is coming down. TECS is going up. Look at this run from here to here. 36% move in the tech sector crash. So you could have traded the bearish ETF for the tech sector, or you could have also opened puts on like Tesla or your Apple or Nvidia, AMD, any of those big tech companies that are coming down, you could have done that as well. Puts probably would have paid much better, but this may have been easier because it's moving like a traditional stock, traditional ETF. Now I'm gonna show you exactly what I am doing to protect my current position. So you could do this, you could you could buy the inverses, the, the bearish ETFs, but you could also do this. Let's pull up Tesla, for example. So Tesla, we know it's nose diving right now. We're around 12 o'clock noon lunchtime and Tesla's fallen. I think Tesla support is right around here. I think it's gonna keep falling until it hits 500. 500, I'm gonna give it all my money. I'm gonna elbow the ATM. It's gonna spit all my money out right into Tesla and I'm gonna make it all back because it's gonna go straight to a thousand. I'm gonna double up. So for example, say you buy Tesla at 800, you go all in. The market falls all the way down and then it bounces all the way back up. Now you broke even. You missed out on all these gains all in here. Why? You could do one of two things. You can buy the stock on a second broker right here at 500, capture those gains, double up here and then break even here. And then when it goes higher, you're making money there. So you made money on both brokers rather than just sitting around waiting. So you could do that or I'll take a position right here. But I won't take a full 100% position right away. I'll take a 10% position because if the stock falls, I can add another 10% here. I could add another 10% here. And then once I know, I could say, hey, I wish I could have Tesla down here at this line. So if it ever does come down, I'll go very aggressively. So I have 30%, right, in these three bubbles. It comes down to here, I'll do 70%. So now my average isn't up in this area. It's very messy. So my average isn't up here. No, now my average is probably right here because I went very aggressive in over here. So now I own the stock here rather than up here. So when the stock bounces, it only needs to go up right here, 100 points, and I'm even. And then all this is gains because instead you would be waiting here to break even. If you do this strategy, you're actually gonna like this when the stocks go red. So 
you're not just watching your money sink away. You're actually kind of excited about it because you know you can average down and get cheaper prices, the cheaper prices that you want to get previously that you couldn't. So that's it for the, today's theme of in a pickle. I like pickles, so I'm enjoying it. I mean, it's unfortunate that the market's going down, but this is necessary. We gotta flush out the weak hands. We gotta flush out all the buyers, create some sellers, put a lot of selling pressure on the markets just to run it back up and do it all over again. So that's it. Hit the subscribe if you're new to the channel. Thank you for watching and don't forget, by hitting that button, it's not just subscribing, it's doing magical things. What it's doing is it's getting a little bit closer to retiring young. Thank you.